All right, time for the last page of the Fall 2011 Exam 1. This one's about iPads. So here we're given um, that Mark selected a random sample of 200 faculty members, and he found that 22% of them own an iPad. Uh, to provide an indication of the accuracy of this point estimate, Mark would like to construct a corresponding 90% confidence interval estimate. So first to create this confidence interval, we need a standard error. So we need to compute that. Uh, if we look at our formula card here, let's go up to the page about population proportions. Uh, this is our standard error equation. So let's go ahead, uh, zoom in on it actually. There we go. So <coughs> we have p hat times 1 minus p hat over n, square root of that. All right. So our standard error of p hat is equal to square root of p hat, 1 minus p hat over n. Okay, so if we plug in p hat, which is this value here, we get 0.22, that's 0.78 over n, and he sampled 200 people. And that comes out to 0 0.0293, and that's our final answer. All right, so true or false, this standard error estimates the standard deviation for all the possible p-hat values that would be obtained if repeated samples of 200 UM faculty members were taken. And this is true. It is an estimate, and that's because we don't know the true p um, or the true proportion of faculty members that own an iPad. If we knew that, then we would have the true standard deviation for p-hat, but because we don't know it, we're using an estimate, that makes our... Uh, standard error, an estimate of that standard deviation. All right, and lastly, we're going to provide the 90% confidence interval to estimate the population proportion of all UM faculty members that own an iPad. So we almost have all parts of the confidence interval. Uh, if we look at that same part of the formula card, uh, we'd see that the confidence interval equation is this. So we know p hat, and we now know standard error of p hat. We just need to look up z star. So if we look at our formula card table, uh, we have this nice uh, sideways table, which I believe I could fix. There we go, rotate left. Nope, not quite. There we go. So on this page, I could stay on it. There we go. Um, we have table A2, which is our multipliers for confidence intervals. Uh, for Z star, we're going to be looking at the infinite row down here. And for 90%, that gives us this value here, 1.645. So let's go ahead and plug that in as our Z star value. So we have p hat 0.22 plus or minus 1.645 times the standard error, 0 0.0293. So if we calculate that out to get our margin of error, uh, this is um, 0.0293. 0.0482. Yep. So then if we add and subtract that to 0.22, we get our final answer of 0 0.1718 to 0 0.2682. All right. Allow me to clear the page now as I scroll down. All right, so last couple questions here. If Mark had constructed a 95% confidence interval instead, then that interval would be what compared to a 99% confidence interval estimate? So 95% is less confidence than 99%, and if you're less confident, you don't have to cover as many possible values. 
Uh, you can also see this as the confidence increases, your Z star increases, which makes the confidence interval uh, wider. But 95% is going to be smaller than 99%, which means a lower Z star, and thus a narrower confidence interval. All right, and then lastly, we have this interpretation question. Um, that first one, we estimate with 90% confidence the population proportion of all UM faculty owning iPads to be in that confidence interval. And that's a good, uh, almost textbook uh, explanation of what a confidence interval is. So that one's good. Uh, the second one, there's a 90% chance that the population proportion is in that confidence interval. Well, there's no probability involved here. It's either going to be in there or not. So this is not a good interpretation. And then lastly, 90% of all possible confidence intervals are expected to contain the sample proportion p hat. Well, there's a lot of possible confidence intervals that could be made. That doesn't necessarily mean that 90% of them are. Because uh, you could have many strange, extreme confidence intervals, but they're just very not, not very likely. So this is not a good interpretation here. And then clearly it's not none or all of the above, which leaves that first one. All right, that concludes uh, the fall 2011 exam review. Best of luck studying.